And this guy walks in the music store with this case and goes, hey, you guys got to check this out. Look at this guitar I've got. And opens up the case, and it was this one right here. Hi, I'm Jay Roberts. And I'm Brandon Bellini. And welcome to RMI Jam Tracks Connected, a video series where we showcase our latest backing tracks. Come hang with us while we jam, tell stories, and talk music. And make sure you subscribe down below so you get the videos as they come out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another RMI Jam Tracks Connected video. Yes, sir. So happy to have you all here. We got another great track for you. This is the yep. groovy, soulful jam in A minor, and it is a fun track, man. We have just been having a blast playing over this one. It's one of those tracks where we can be in one key and sound good. We just play our A minor pentatonic, and it's going to take you all the way home, and you can really make some music out of that. And then yep. at the same time, if uh, you want to get really advanced and get into the, the inner workings of all the harmony, there's some real juicy chords in there to play some really fun stuff over. So yeah, you all know, levels can play it. Kind of reminds me a yeah. little bit of a tune called Sunny. Oh, yeah. You know what? In fact, that was really the song that I was, was kind of channeling when I was putting this one together. Yeah, yeah I was thinking about the song Sunny. It kind of works in a little bit of a backwards way with it. But yeah, these these are uh, definitely reminiscent of those chord changes and that kind of style. So Another catchphrase uh, that's really popular today is uh, Neo... Neo Soul. A little Neo bit of soul. taste of Neo Soul in there it's as got well. got a little hippity hop beat too. Yeah, so. a little hip hip kind of sound and uh, a little trendy and we're we're kind of putting our own little twist on it. So we hope you enjoy this one. Well, I think what we'll do is play a little game this time. So, oh boy. You know, we're going to start with some uh, A minor pentatonic like so many things do uh, yeah, yeah. In, in the guitar world. It's just because it's something that many people are familiar with, right? Yeah. And so if we can make things sound good there... Um, chances are we have a chance of, of making things sound good in different fingering patterns and even different keys. But if things aren't jiving so well in, in, in A minor pentatonic, yeah, there's not really a, any justified reason in my book to go explore a whole bunch of other scales and patterns yeah. and arpeggios and things um, because it's about the music. So all the notes are there. That's and, wise. Um, so why don't you do A minor pentatonic, okay, bluesy okay. rock stuff right. for level one. And I'm just going to do C major scale, you know, the do, re, mi. Oh, we've heard thing. about it. And <laughs> we, yes, it's been, it's been showing up. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's right. And uh, which is a seven note scale, but they're in the same key. So they'll have slightly different sounds. They'll listen to the mm. treatment. I'm going to use, um, for level one, why don't I use this guy here? Good. C major, and you're going to use A minor. Maybe with a little blues note or something. All right, let's go for it. All let's right. Let's see what it sounds like. We're kicking it off. Am I kicking this one off? Yeah, why don't you roll? All right, right here we go. thing really works great over this. You can stay right home, stay close to home. And I'm going to play all C major ideas again. Yeah. 
I slipped into your territory oh, he there. Did. Yeah, you went Should we trade parts a little bit? What if uh, let's oh, hear your pentatonic? Oh, so you want me to play some rock? Yeah, can we pentatonic and you do some yeah, other yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. That just has soul, doesn't it? Ooh. Ooh, I love that. Shredsky. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Taste. See, taste always wins over shred every time. As far as I'm concerned. So that's a big part of what we're doing yeah. here. Is like expressing that, you know, fast isn't always better. Sometimes, that's why people like... Feel. They like feel, you know. So don't be in such a rush to go learn a bunch of uh, fast ARPs and things like that. Because it's, um, to be honest yeah. with you, it's a little bit pretentious. It's kind of like putting the... It's the tail wagging the dog, is what Ooh, we call it. Ooh, I like it. the way you say well, it's, that. You know, it's good. kind of putting the cart in front of the horse. There's some classic phrases mm. about that. And that means just because I know that I can play all this whatever uh, lick that I've got um, doesn't mean that I should. Mm. Right? Wise. So that's the difference. So, uh, you know, that what's interesting is it's like playing a kind of a jazzy tone on a Telecaster yeah. is very odd. Um, although there's some great guys that, that do that. Uh, Ted Green uh, was probably one of the Ooh, all-time Ted, masters Ted Green, of that. Absolutely. And there's some really wonderful players that, that get... Mike Stern Mike plays... Mike Stern. Well, his, I don't think it's fusion. a Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, but he gets kind of but a, a fusion-y thing. Guitar. And yeah. You can actually do it. This one, however, I've really messed with the, the, the world with putting flat wounds on a telly. And do I'm you want to explain flat wounds a little bit? You I don't know, know if everybody knows about flat wound strings. I don't know if I want to because I think I'm going to get a bunch of hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> See, the round wound strings have the... Yeah, they, they can make the scratchy noises. This one doesn't make any scratchy noises. This is all smooth. Yeah. So that basically what they they wrap the string with is is like it's tape. It's a ribbon. It's, it's like a, a ribbon, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's flat, so it gets a really... You don't get any of that squeak. See how everything is real smooth sounding? Yeah. But uh, typically, this is the last guitar you'd put flat ones on. But you know, I put it on, put them on most of my guitars. That's actually. right. So, um, so that speaking of this guitar, it's oh yeah, it has a very interesting story to it. Sure um, does. HR obviously uh, played this. My dad on on uh, many many uh, TV tunes and you know Twilight Zone and Batman and. Uh, you know, Green Acres and, you know, Bonanza. It just goes on and on. So it's probably the most heard guitar in the world, actually. Um, and then when he was done doing that kind of studio work in about 1970, uh, he just, uh, he basically gave it to a guy and said, here, take it. And uh, because, you know, HR wasn't a guitar collector, he was a, um, he was a player. So he looked at this as a tool and very much like he, he would tell me that this is a, this is like a hammer, right? In a, in a, in a toolbox <laughs> yeah. for a, for a, tool a guy that does construction or plumbing or something, you know, this is his hammer. And, um, and he also said, it's just a plank, <laughs> <laughs> it's always cracked me up. You know, it's just a plank. It's a solid piece of wood, and, you know, it would work great as a boat oar if you needed to. And uh, so 
it went away in about 1970, uh, away from the family, and uh, never saw it again until after he passed away. Wow. And uh, my, my stepmom uh, decided that she wanted to try to get all of his guitars together to sell them uh, in a collection. So she wanted to um, sell all of his stuff at once, right, as a collection. And we couldn't find this guitar. We are looking for it. She, was, she had the APB out there and uh, State Border Patrol, everyone, everyone was looking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just kidding. So anyway, it, so we had all points bulletin going on. And yeah. uh, basically, um, my sister Madeline was down in Phoenix, which interestingly enough is where my dad grew up. <laughs> and she was, was in a music store and this guy walks in the music store with this case and goes, hey, you guys got to check this out. Look at this guitar I've got. And opens up the case, and it was this one right here. Oh, my goodness. And, Crazy. you know, you're like, uh, okay, butterscotch, uh, telly. Uh, well, how, how, do you, how do we know it's that one? There's a lot of butterscotch tellies out there. Well, you look on the back. It's got a car, all of his carvings that he did in the studios back in the day with, a, with, a po- with his pocket knife. So no question about it. This was his guitar. It came back into the family, and then... Um, she didn't sell the whole collection. Long story short, uh, she sold the guitars one at a time. And uh, the singer from a band that I worked with, his, his name was Big Jim, and Jim Matheson, he bought it. And he played it for a while. And then one day he just turned to me and he just handed it to me like this. He goes, this is yours. Wow. It's, it's time for you to... Uh, take this on and he passed passing the torch basically and uh, honor the legacy of your dad he goes this is wow. this is your duty so Unreal. here it is and that was in about 1977 and then uh i started using it on gigs i didn't really know what it was because i'm not I'm, uh, really a guitar geek in the sense of knowing about years and and things like that interestingly enough it said broadcaster up here it didn't say Telecaster. I didn't know the difference. Um, so I figured I had a, a broadcaster, right? And it had some noise. It kind of buzzed a little bit when I, you know, plugged it in. And um, so I called up this cat here in the Northwest named Mark Arnquist. And I said, hey, Mark, I've got this this broadcaster that is making noise. I'm trying to get rid of the this buzz. How do I do it? You know, what what do you do? Do you put, like foil in the cavity or you know ground wire or what do you got to do he goes oh you mean that 52 telly of your dad's and i go no yeah. this this is a 51 broadcaster and he goes no you mean the 52 telly i go well i go it says broadcaster right on the on the headstock here and he goes oh well the guy that uh your dad gave that to was a, a guy from nashville and he uh, wanted me to put a uh, broadcaster sticker on it, and it, so I just happened to call Mark Arquist, and he's he the guy the that put that did, that that. did the, oh put the sticker on it. And I was like, wow, unbelievable, unreal. So then, fast forward another ten years to about uh, 2010, I got approached by a publisher uh, that wanted to do this book, uh, desktop book of a uh, of uh, 150 of the most elite guitars in the world and they called yeah. me up and said uh we understand you have this this guitar and we uh-huh. want to take pictures of it and we'll fly somebody to your location and uh all that type of thing so they basically they flew around the world and, and took pictures of clapton's guitar where, wherever they needed to oh, go yeah. well it turns out the publisher was right down the street from rmi literally like a mile yeah becker and meyer is the publisher and so so i just went down there and they took all these they wanted to take all these pictures and i'm thinking to myself dang you know it says broadcaster on here um i don't know that that's really what we wanted to this guitar to represent because when hr had it it said telecaster which it is a telecaster 52 and uh so I'm like, I was really torn on what to do. Uh, well, 
To get a 52 sticker that's actually this sticker um, is very hard to do. I mean, you, you there's there's knockoffs that you can buy, but they're not right. The colors aren't right. They have this. They need to have just the right amount of of uh, pearlescence and mm -hmm. the color yeah. of the gold has to be just right. I'm like, wow, that's going to be a, a chore. Get a call from uh, right up the street at American Music. My buddy calls me up and says, hey, man, the Fender uh, rep is here. you got to bring that guitar by here. So I go, wow. you know, in between yeah. lessons, I went over there, and uh, the guy looks at this, and his jaw just drops on the floor. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. And, uh, and I go, yeah, man, we, we really, we're getting ready to do this shoot, and, and I really need the, the proper 52 sticker. And he goes, one second, gets right on the phone. He calls Fender. They take, they, they patch him through to the right department. Next thing I know, I've got a real 52 sticker. Uh, and then I got to find the guy to put it on. Well, there's one guy, um, and that was Mike Lowell. And Mike he was just Lowell. a m wonderful guitar luthier technician and and he i would totally trust him with this instrument you know and so he uh he did it he put the sticker on put it together we went down and, and we did the photo shoot on it and um you know the rest is history so this this thing really has an amazing story and i'm just honored to be able to share it I'm with, honored to be in the room with that guitar. Yeah. <laughs> it just has an aura. That thing just has a glow to it. It does. Just don't tell anybody it has flat wounds. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we get in trouble for that one. Yeah. Well, That's hey. That's awesome, dude. You want to play a little more? Yeah, let's jump right into another little, little right. plane thing. we got to jump into kind of a the next level, what I think. What do you want to uh, do, like a more... Like a level two more advanced over that yeah, same track? Yeah, let's, let's get a little more advanced. And um, okay. maybe it's a good time to talk about the chord changes a little bit. And, oh, um, yeah. And what, what to got? expect with the with the kind of more advanced harmony here. Um, yeah, so let's review these chords a little bit together and okay. kind of talk about them here. We got um, an F major 7 first. And then we go into a E altered chord. I'm just playing yep. like the Jimi Hendrix. Sure. Oh, hey. Yes. Gotta do it. And then we got a uh, uh, an A minor chord, mm -hmm. and that walks down A minor seven, A flat minor seven, G minor seven, C nine, and then we're back home to our F major seven. So Perfect. pretty simple. But if we account for these these two five chords that we have, the E altered and the C nine chord, we can put some pretty interesting things in there with using diminished tonality, whole tone scale tonality, melodic minor. Um, yep. All sorts of things that can uh, can be be put in place of those chords to get some kind of fun. I like harmony. that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. All right. Um, try it out a little bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I think I'm gonna. I'm just for the heck of it gonna do some diminished ideas. Oh, over that's that. a good one. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go like, uh, like I'm, that. I'm gonna think of that. You know, E7 sharp nine to E7 flat nine. Nice. Nice. Right. Which really gives me like a F diminished or a D diminished or a, a B diminished mm, like or that. A flat diminished. Oh, those are all the same. So I'm going to play that over that chord. Cool. And then when I get to the uh, C7 or the C9, I'm going to look at that as C7 flat 9. I'm going to use the same treatment. So that's going to be like a G diminished. I'm sure, right? sure. Right. Okay. I like so that. I'll I'm try gonna... some of that too. Okay. So let's we can go do a for little it. bit of that. You kick it off this time. Alrighty. Ready. Yeah, nice, nice. 
landing. I think. Sounds so good. Oh, nice. Nice target. There you go. That's a great example of diminished usage over that. try this idea. So this time we're going to look at those uh, altered dominant chords <coughs> from the root and we're going to play augmented arpeggios Ooh, over them. Ooh, nice. Okay, so it'll like sound like that. this. Augmented arpeggios. I like that. Nice. So it's a little like, let's see. Oh yeah, I got to turn my guitar up. So I'll try and hit the next one. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, right there. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. a lot of fun and and you know basically we're dealing with a tune that is a minor play the blues yeah. over it yeah and that also works and sounds great and once your ear starts to like other sounds there's lots of places to go yeah. uh, and if if your ear never does like those sounds then just stay right at home and play the blues and it's going to sound killer play from the heart if you play from the heart you're going to you know put bb king over that and he's going to kill it Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. No doubt. And all these fancy notes and all this altered stuff that we're doing. Yeah, you know, some guys take it or leave it at that point. <laughs> They'd rather hear like this. Like stuff like. Sure, man. Especially on a guitar like this. I just got to learn how to do it, though. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been so fun, man. What a blast. Hope you enjoy the backing track. Give us some feedback on how much uh, how much you're enjoying it. We want to see yep. some. We'd love to see some people post some videos of them playing oh, to our man. backing tracks. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be That'd awesome? That'd be so cool. If you, you know, we oh, would man. Thoroughly enjoy it. Maybe we even put a feature video together of some people jamming over our backing would tracks. Would love that. Yeah. Would yeah, love that. That'd be so fun. Right well, on. Until the next one, we're uh, we're out here, and I think uh, next week we got some shred metal going on. Oh, next week's shred? I think we're going... Uh, is it this, or Steen. is it this, or is it... I can't remember. <laughs> I got to make sure you use the right finger. I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Peace out. Cheers. Cheers.
Thank you.